everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm going to um, demonstrate some iris folding today and it's something that I've, you may or may not have seen. I sent some things out to Betsy Doodle and to Ashley Paper and Twine. Um, they may have shown them on their channel but um, it's not a new thing. It's something obviously that's been around for a long, long time but um, I will leave links to these diagrams. These diagrams I've just printed off the internet um and these say they're by judy hedrick but um there's loads of different patterns for iris folding um but you can you know like i say you can just print them off the internet so there's a triangle one there there is a pentagon one but the one i've been mainly using is a square and this works great with apertures which are square or also circular um if i can i'll leave you a actually i'll put a couple of pictures in and um, one of a square one that I've done um, as a in a box frame because they look really good in a box frame and also I put a picture in of uh, a card done in using the same thing but just with a circle aperture so on the sheet you see they get different sizes and you can always um, what's the word, enlarge or um, reduce them if you want them to be a particular size. This one here I'm going to use is 10 and a half by 10 and a half centimetres. So that's about four and a quarter, I think, by four and a quarter, something like that. Let's have a look. Yeah, just under, just under four and a quarter. Um, so I thought I would do um, a card or whatever I'm going to do. Um, with a frame because you need something to stick your paper to and the aperture will be four inches which is just slightly um, smaller than the width and length of that box so in fact i'll probably do a five by five inch um square but with or maybe not even five i've done i have done something five by five but maybe five and th four and three quarters perhaps i'll do Something like that, four and three quarters. Uh, or shall we stick to five? No, I'm going to stick to five. I'm going to do a five by five square and cut out of that a, ten, a, a four by four inch um, square in the middle. So where's my bit of card? Here we go. I've got a piece of card here. That is the front of it because of the way my my cutter works. Um, that course it's kind of a bit of a ridge at the back so that's the front so I'm going to turn that over this is the back it's five by five and I want to have a four uh, by four inch so um, aperture in the middle so how we're we going to do this we're going to have to go for half an inch I think on either side so I'm just measuring a frame of half an inch all the way around so I'm doing three marks down each side so that I know that I've made a nice straight um, she says this is not right let's do that again yeah I'm not, not feeling very accurate with that I have got a better um, ruler that I could use but that will do and then we'll do the same um, on this side so back on we go and we're measuring half an inch three times down the layer down the side I'm doing that all the way around and then I'll show you when I've just done these two not terribly accurate either you have something like this but you'll have it all the way around and this is the bit here that you cut away just to leave you with that half inch frame now if you feel that half inch isn't enough you could make your frame size three quarters of an inch all the way around or an inch whatever you want but I'm, I'm going to go with the um, half an inch for now 
I'm just cutting out my frame. You can do this um, with whatever tools you have available. I have got a knife and a ruler and a glass cutting mat and that's what I'm using. If you've got a Cricut, you could do this very easy on your Cricut. I use my Cricut to do um, a circle because it's for me it's quite difficult to cut out a circle accurately. Um, but you just use the slice, you get the, the square size of your card or whatever it is you're doing and use the slice feature to cut out a circle. Um, and, um, you know, and some of the trimmers can trim, um, can cut in between lines as well. I think actually mine can, but it's not very accurate. Right. Let's see how we've gone with that. Oh, I haven't even done that side, so that's not going to come out, is it? Right, usually I'm having to go back into the corners. Could leave that piece of card to use for another project so this is what we're left with oops there's the back and there is the front now there's a little bit there i'm not that happy with which i might just tidy up with a pair of scissors if i could find them and i'm not sure i can do it this way let's see Right, so there's my frame, and that's the front of the frame, and that's the back because you can still see the pencil lines on the back. So, what we need to do is to find a flat surface, put your um, pattern down, and then you need to line up your aperture as best you can. Now, if you shift it around, you can see here. Well, first of all, you can see I've come off the edge of the um, sort of the stencil but also this little triangle here is much slimmer than this one so we, all we need to do is just line them up so that it's as, as pretty central as we can we can go um, and then you can use some washi tape or some um, let's have a look oh I've got it out masking tape is what I'm going to use not too sticky because you don't want to damage your if you can help it you don't want to damage your um, sheet underneath because then you can reuse it but also um, if you don't want to damage your frame or anything like that so let's just see what we've got going on here i do tend to um stick my masking tape on the back of my hand first just so it's not too sticky so let's get that Something like that. And oops, I'm not going to go too close um, to the centre here because I might want to glue on there. And down, same down here. And I'll go down this side here. Now you could do the other edge, you could put it down on the. Um, oh, let's not go quite like that. You'll see why, why I've tried to keep it nearer the edge. Right, that's not going to move now. That's ready to go. I'm just going to put that to one side while I talk about the type of paper you can use. Now, I have done mine with contrast. I usually use jelly prints because I like my jelly prints and you get quite a good contrast. You could use patterned papers. So I might have a go at one in a minute with this, but you could use... Um, Let's see, you could use like a, a bold floral, perhaps with a plain green or another plain colour um, and a different floral and a different colour, a different plain or three patterned ones and a plain one, three plain ones and a patterned one. It's up to you how you do this. If I show you how it builds up, you can decide for yourself the kind of thing you want to make. So the next thing I'm going to do 
and to cut my strips of paper. Now I'm looking at this, I need my first strips to be fairly wide because when I fold them and I'm going to have a folded edge, I still need there to be, what's that, at least three quarters of an inch depth on them. So, you know, I would, I tend to do the first one or two quite wide and then I tend to do the rest about an inch. So, which end do I want to start using? Let's start this one in here. And it doesn't matter really about the size of your paper, provided the paper is wide enough that it fits across there as a strip like that. So what's that, about three inches, something like that, for this design, that's all you need. And if it's wider than that, like this is, it doesn't matter because you can use it again. So I think I'm going to start I'm going to start with a strip of maybe three and a half centimetres. No, let's do four centimetres. You don't need as many strips as you think either. So that'll be my first strip because I need a couple of them which are quite large. And then I'm going to do, maybe I'll just do the rest at an inch. Or oh no, three centimetres. I'm going to do three centimetres just because it lines up on my board and... Um, it's just slightly bigger than an inch. So I'm going to do, I don't know how many to do of these. Four, oops, not four centimetres. Um, I've done one large one and three of the others. Is that enough? I'm not sure, but we can always cut some more if we need to. And I'm going to do the same with these other colours too. So I've got this pale colour, I've got a green metallic, a red and uh, metallic and a blue, sort of paley blue with some bubble wrap dots. Those are the four papers I'm going to use. Right, I've cut all of these the same. Um, I, even though they're different widths, it doesn't matter. So what do you do? I'm gonna say you want about um, two thirds and it's not gotta be exact. I'm not measuring anything, I've just put my ruler on here because I kind of split it into thirds and I'm just bringing my paper back to fold like that. If you want to, you can get a bone folder and do it as well. Now you can leave it like this, but I have found that you get a better look if you glue it. Now you could, most people I've seen using, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, like a glue stick but um, I've just been using this um, well, it's by what is it the art glitter glue but any sort of PVA would do and basically what you're going to do is glue down so you've got a nice folded edge that you're going to use on your um, through that aperture so I'm going to crack on and do all of these Right, here we go. Here are my strips. Now you can see they're different uh, widths. Obviously, I started off with one that was um, a slightly wider strip, um, but even these, they're not they're not accurate. They don't need to be accurate. Um, it's nice if they're um, I would say if they're straight. When you do them, I'm trying to find a. I've, so this is quite a wonky one. Look, it's there's much less white down this end than there is at this end. It doesn't really matter, provided you've got that nice straight edge. Um, and it's only for like a short distance as well. So don't don't beat yourself up over it. Just basically fold over a bit and glue it down. That is re really essentially all it is. So bring on the pattern. And remember that the front is underneath. Okay, it's facing down. This is the back. And we are just going to line up. Now these have got numbers on them. Sometimes they're they're numbered differently, but these ones are numbered sequentially. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not like that. So that's the order that we're doing it. You've just got to think about, basically, you've got four colours starting in the corners. What colours do you want where? 
So look, we've got red, a blue, and it depends on the patterns and things you've got. So these are quite similar, I would say. Hang on, let's get those there. The blues and the the blue and the those are fairly similar, so I'd probably separate those and then just put these in between. That's what I would do. So I'd start maybe red, green, peach, blue. And that, that's what I'll do. Okay, and you when you've made your uh, made your iris folding card or whatever you're going to use it for, you can decide then what um what orientation it goes at as well. Okay, so let me come down so you can see what we're doing. I'll try to show you very carefully. So I'm going to start with the red and I'm starting with the thickest red because that's my thickest width here. And this is my best edge, so that's what's going to go down. And then I'm going to find a place. So I'm going to cut this so it fits on here. You don't want it popping out the top, so you're going to have to trim off some bits. But you need some place to glue it on. Now I've seen people using tape. I've tried using tape. But um, it makes it very bulky. It makes the whole thing bulky. This is going to be bulky because if you think about it, you're adding layers and layers of paper on the top. Um, and that's just going to make it bulky. But I will show you what, what I do if I'm going to make it into a card. Okay, so that looks like that. That will line up pretty well on there. Um, there's a little bit too much at the top, so I'm going to trim a little bit off that corner up there. And also down here, well, we're coming off the page there, so maybe I'll just try and trim it down there. Don't be, um, you know, don't be, don't be, you have to be really super accurate for this. That's still sticking off the page there, so I'm going to make that. A little bit and it gets easier as you go on it's just the first ones really when you're sticking to the edge of the to the frame so that would do now you can see that this is going to be um, on top of the masking tape so I probably won't glue that bit I'll probably just glue with this tip down here and this bit at the top so you glue on the right side okay just at the edges you don't need a lot of glue Okay, you just want it to dry in place. So line it up against the line, number one, on it goes. And what I might do is just because there's quite a lot of um, stuff there, I might just put a bit of extra glue. Okay, so that's the first one down. Now we swap colour to our next one, which is going to be the green one. And that's going to go on here somehow. So I'm looking up here, I'm just going to cut that off, we don't need that bit. Okay, don't throw these away, we use them as, as long as we can. And this bit here looks like it's going to be in the way, so I'm going to cut it off about like that. Yeah, that will do fine. And then we're going to glue it on, remember, turn it over glue on the right side and this one is going in position two like so and you just line it up and glue it on that is all you do right next one is this peachy color we're coming on down here um i can probably get away with that so there uh, we'll cut it off about there let's get those bits off of my so that we keep oops sorry and then we will want to get rid of this excess here so I'm just going I'm just going to head up there like that hopefully that will be fine and again we're just gluing this very tip here and it, like I say it gets easier because it's the first ones where you're trying to attach to the frame where it's harder. So just line it up, glue it on. Right, now we're on to the blue one. And that will be fine there. I want to cut it off about like that and I'm going to make that snip there. And we've still got too much hanging off so I'll just grab that like that. That will be fine. 
gluing the tip and the base there, bringing it back, lining it up so we're up against the line and that's our first rotation if you like. Right we're back on red so we could try to try this one, it may not be big enough, don't worry if it's not big enough, I think mine, oh it's just big enough there, look you can see, but if it's not big enough use a new strip save this one for one of the others because they do get smaller okay so i think that will do me i'm just going to trim off that sort of shape because i think that will fit fine like that i have a bit extra on this edge which we don't need just so long as we fit we fit across that line which we do and we glue again so um Oopsie. Uh, make sure you line it up with the nice creased edge along the line and you're just gluing onto what you've already got now if you wanted to if you're worried you could put a bit of glue down but generally mine have been fine and I have just glued the ends that's all right we're on the green side and then we Uh, go across here, let me cut that. Okay, so I have finished going round the um, aperture, if you like. Um, let's have a look and see what we've got. I've used, it's weirdly, I've got a whole strip of this one left. Um, and then this, and a couple of odds and ends. So not much, but um, I didn't have to cut any more strips. So I've done, I can't remember how many I did. I think it was four strips. But you don't need as much as you think you need. Okay, I'm trying to remove the masking tape without doing too much damage, she says, ripping the template underneath. That doesn't matter, it's easy enough to print another. Here we go. And if you can't rip this bit, oh, it's come out easily. If not, you can always cut things, because this is the back, you're not going to see it. All right, are we ready for the big reveal? Oops, let's move that out of the way. Are we ready? How cool is that? 
Now, depending on what you're going to do with this, if it's going to be a card, um, you need to decide what you want to do with this little hole. If you want to leave it like that, or if you want to put something behind it. Generally, I put something behind it that isn't one of these um, pieces, just because I think you need a contrast. Otherwise, it just looks like part of it. So let me have a look and see what I've got. I've got this piece of um, a jelly print, which is not quite the same as any of the bits, and I can rotate it and find a place that I'm quite happy with. I quite like making these gold as well in the middle, but I'm not going to do that for this one. So I've cut it so it will fit on here quite nicely, and I need to put some glue on it, but I need to leave that aperture so that it's not got glue, obviously, so that it will... Um, show through. So I'm going to put it on like that loosely, turn it over and have a look. Actually that's not too bad. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a wiggle and then stick that on. Now let me tell you how I would make that into a card. Now this is quite, I mean, it's not really dimensional but you can see you've got more layers um, around the centre obviously than you have around the edge. So if I was putting that on a card, I would get a piece of, let me cut some. Sorry, I just realised I didn't have my microphone attached to me. Um, I'd get some card. now. There's a, you can't probably see it, but there's a definite feel that you could get a triangle on there, something like that. So that is what I do. I get a piece of thickish packaging, like um, corrugated card or something like that, and find the right way, that one or that one. Uh, why can't I do that? Anyway, and I would glue that like that onto there and you can get two and you should find that you've got two that sort of fit roughly and the same again let's just and glue that and glue that and then I'll just put glue on those bits and this bit and plonk that onto a card base or whatever you're going to do with it um, if you're going to put it in a frame well obviously you don't need to do that you could just stick it straight in a frame you could go around the edge in gold or you know whatever you fancy but that's how i've been doing and playing with my iris folding i hope you enjoyed that and um i'll be back again soon bye for now just popping back to say that i made one of those um circle ones with this paper pad that's what it looks like. And um, I'll explain slightly about it. This paper is 180 GSM, which I would say would probably be the top GSM you would want to use. The thicker the paper, obviously by the time you've folded it and glued it, is. Uh, it's just chunky it's, and chunky -er. it's hard to glue them I mean it looks pretty but it is quite quite a chunky thing um, so a thinner paper would be better but on the plus side because these papers were double sided what I did was collect two different pattern papers and on the back they have two different colors so I just used one sheet of this and one sheet of that cut um, into strips half of them I folded with this as a top side half of them I folded with this same goes for this half of this I folded with the blue side half with the pattern side so I've only used two sheets of paper to create this so that's pretty cool anyway just wanted to share that and to let you know that I'll leave a link to some templates in my description box so if you wanted to have a go you could print them out and have a play so uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and you have fun playing with your iris folding. Bye for now.